How it has taken me this long to make a video on these wet slap-tastic mobs is beyond me. However, better late than never. That being said, don't expect too much here, as these monsters are pretty easy to understand, actually. If only the same could be said about fighting them, though. Kiting tentacles is tricky business. They are fast, strike twice, and deal pretty darn good damage because of that. I like to think of the kiting pattern as the two swoosh method. It's easy to remember. Immediately after you hear the second swoosh, go in and get your one hit in before getting your butt the heck out of there. Spacing may trouble you, and unfortunately I can't really give you specifics there, as lag and all that will make things differently for everyone. But remember, the second swoosh is key. Practice makes perfect here, and since tentacles are always wet, electrical damage is phenomenal. As for some other murder methods, leading merms and or spiders to tentacles could very well kill them both. However, weakening tentacles goes a heck of a long way too, mind you. A lot of the time, these fights just occur naturally all the time. So it's really just up to you to take advantage when you can. And one last potential method is maybe to grab some loyal pork or rabbit to help because tentacles are single target attackers. So grouping up on them makes things a heck of a lot more easy like. Good luck, but watch the loot around these guys. Speaking of, tentacles drop two pieces of matzo meat every single time, but have a 50% chance to give a tentacle spike and a 20% chance to drop what are known as tentacle spots. Obviously, the meat can be dried, used sparingly in meat dishes, eaten straight up if you wish, etc. If you are watching a guide on tentacles, chances are you know what food is and what it does for ya. But now, as for the tentacle spikes, they are melee weapons exclusive to tentacle drops and have 100 uses total at 51 damage a hit. Truly not bad at all and is certainly an upgrade over that of a spear. But the tentacle spots, the tentacle spots can be quite coveted and allow me to explain. One of the crafts that require them is the feather hand underneath the dress tab. When worn, not only do you gain a plus two sanity per minute boost, you automatically increase the amount of birds that will land around you all in a shorter amount of time to boot. Perfect for farming bird loot and amazing if you happen to combine it with Wickerbottom's Birds of the World. Oh, and the feather hat itself is needed to actually adopt a giblet from the rock den, by the way. And speaking of Wickerbottom, Bottoms books. Tentacle spots are needed to create the On Tentacles novel itself. The use of this book spawns three tentacles randomly within a small radius and costs 50 sanity to use. It can be used for a number of purposes for our pleasure, most notably some big bad fights. However, its overall importance cannot go underappreciated. It is the only source of renewability for normal tentacles, as normal tentacles do not re spawn at all, so big key there. But moving on to the raincoat, yet another dress item that will require some tentacle spots to whip it up. The raincoat provides 100% resistance to wetness, protects against lightning strikes including the attacks of electrified vault goats, and even provides a small insulation from the cold. Very useful, however the downside is you will be missing out on your inventory space along the way. Now here Here's an interesting one, albeit way too expensive, the tail. Oh, three cats. A ranged melee weapons game and one of the very few items out there that truly does have a unique use. When slapping mobs, a loud snap may occur that causes certain mobs to lose aggro. This happens 25% of the time for basic mobs, 20% of the time for monsters, and even 5% of the time for bosses. However, that last one still is not going to do much for you. Other than that, they have 175 uses and deal 27 points 
1.2 damage, which is considerable actually. It's interesting, however not worth it in my opinion. And lastly, Merm Flortifications from Wurt herself. These structures house loyal Merm guards that are essentially just upgraded versions of normal Merms that are loyal to the king of the Merms. But speaking of, trading fish to the king of green has a chance to give back tentacle spots without the need for encountering much danger, which is now pretty darn handy all things considered. Normal tentacles may not be renewable, yes, but their loot is, and that's very, very nice. But hold up. That cannot be true for the tentacle spikes though, right? Sure can, friend, because big tentacles exist too. The loot table on these things is pretty strange, with light bulbs, slurtle slime, turf, rocks, and heck, even full-on skeletons being a possibility. However, tentacle spots still drop 50% of the time, with tentacle spots dropping 40% of the time. Great stuff. Because yes, big tentacles do in fact respawn. Fighting big tentacles is quite annoying, however still quite doable. One option is to get a hit or two or three in on them, move to where little to no baby tentacles are, and either clearing the way to strike again or simply just waiting for the baby tentacles to retreat after a while, as they will do so. It is slow tedious but very safe and a lot more safe when tackling this solo or of course you can toss a light bulb and or glow berry into hutch along with a spear to create fugu hutch with him right up or in between the tentacle and yourself you should be able to slaughter all the baby tentacles with these however i kind of remember this working a lot better than it does now i don't know maybe i just Forgot how it actually works. Whatever the case, big tentacles also serve as the wormholes of the caves, in case you didn't know. However, the biggest note is that one of them leads to the atrium and thus the ancient fuel weaver. They are pretty much considered the final two parts of the game, in case you were wondering. So, great stuff. And really my last piece of advice is watch your sanity meter while navigating the swamp and open your ears. The biome itself does not drain your sanity. It is the tentacles that do so, even while they are hidden. Furthermore, some very low growls indicate the location of hidden tentacles. So both of these are great tips for just locating them and of course, staying safe. So. Good luck. Oh, and of course, there is the retrap set piece, which is Tentacle Central. But we've talked about it countless times across boss guides and more. So there's really no need to now, especially when not everyone is even going to have a retrap in their worlds. And there you have it, everyone. A guide on tentacles and all the slap-tastic fun that comes with them. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.